In this video you will learn about Unity style maps in 3D projects, how to set up them in a project, how to work with prefab brushes, and how to save the brushes just like you do with scriptable objects. Also, I will tell you a couple of ideas where you can use style maps in your 3D games. Interested? Continue watching. Hey, hey, it's Tamora here. Did you know that Unity style maps can actually be used in 3D projects? What? Yeah, that's true. And in this video, we will be making a small project which uses this cool feature. So what are these style maps which work in 3D? Usually style maps are considered 2D objects, and that's what I thought of them for a long time. But the truth is, they can be used in 3D projects as well. I will show you how to set up a project like this in a minute. Also, you should check out my other video about Unity style maps. There is a lot of useful information about them that you might not know about. I created a 3D project in Unity and created a simple plane to simulate the ground. The first thing you are going to do is install the Unity tile map package to get access to all the basic features connected to tile maps. For this, go to Windows, Package Manager, and then select Packages, Unity Registry, find 2D tile map editor and click Install. After the installation is complete, we can proceed further. Click on the hierarchy, create, 2D object and find a tile map. We can see that we have a tile map in the scene, but it is rotated the wrong way. To set things right, go to the grid object, find the cell swizzle and set it to X, Z, Y. Then go to the tile map object, find the tile map component and set the orientation to X, Z. This is the basic tile map which you can use like the regular one. You can paint tiles on it, but they're going to be flat. One of the problems that you might have is that sprites are important into a 3D project as textures and not sprites. To change this, you can click on the sprite and set the texture type to sprite, 2D and UI. Create a palette like you always do and drag the sprite onto it. Name the file, save it and we can paint. To avoid these glitching textures, you can lift the tile map just a little bit. Set the Y coordinate to something like 0.01. .01. We need to install the Unity Tile Map Extras package to get access to other cool features that you can use with tile maps, including the prefab brush that I mentioned earlier. Go to the package manager again and find the 2D Extras package. Click Install. After the installation, you can go ahead to your palette window and select the prefab brush. Now, let's see what we have here. There is a field to put in the prefab which you can paint with. Then we have the offset, which is obviously going to offset the object you're painting. And then we have scale. This is if you want to make the object bigger or smaller. Orientation is for turning your object around. We can set it to something like 1 on the x-axis and next time we paint we can see that the house is on its side. Now fields that are concerning the prefab are over and we can move on to the fields that are for the whole brush. We have the size, pivot and anchor. I want to show you what happens if we change the size of the brush to 2x2. Two two. We can see that as we change it, new elements start to appear. Now, instead of one object, we can paint with multiple. Fill out the object field in each element and paint. I have the trees and their sides, which we can easily fix by changing the orientation of them right here in the brush. Now, let me explain how this actually works. Objects are being placed in your scene on the tile map. They become children of the tile map object, the one that you're placing them on. However, they're not taking the tiles on the tile map. If we try to put another tile on the same spot, it will be just painted over the existing object. Honestly, when I was researching this feature, I kinda thought that they work differently, more like regular tile maps. It would be great for a grid-based building system, like I did in 2D. But don't worry, I will be doing a grid building system tutorial for 3D, so stay tuned. And hit that like button so I know that you're waiting for it. Now, the problem that you might have with this is saving. Imagine that you created a beautiful brush with selected range of prefabs, and you want to make another one for something different. Maybe a set of collectible items which you want to place around the map. The problem is, if you try to make another brush, this one will disappear. To avoid this, let's save these brushes to our assets. To do so, we have to create a script and then create brushes, much like you do with scriptable objects. 
Create a script called Prefer Brush. Open it in the editor. Before the declaration, in square brackets write Create Asset Menu and pass a file name and a menu name. Then write Custom Grid Brush, pass False for Hide Asset Instances, True for Hide Default Instance, False for Default Brush and a default name Prefab Brush. Now make the class inherit from the game object Brush class. Go to the editor, right click on the file manager. Select Create and then Brushes, your Prefab Brush. Now we have an instance of your brush, which you can customize and it will be saved in the assets. That was great, but that's not everything we can do with scripting. We're going to write a custom erase method since it doesn't work with default object brush. You can reference Unity scripting API to see what other methods you can override. For example, you can make it paint not only objects, but also flat tiles. Go to the script editor and create an override method erase, which accepts a grid layout, game object brush target, and a vector 3 int position. Next, create a static method get object in cell, which returns a transform. It will accept a grid, a transform parent, and a vector 3 position. First, get the child count of the transform object you passed. Then, create a variable vector3 called min and assign the position passed. Converted from cell to local interpolated and then from local to world. After this, get the maximum in a similar way, but pass the position plus 1. Create new bounds and pass half of the sum of minimum and maximum for the center and the difference between maximum and minimum. Go through each child transform and check if the bounds you saved contain the position of that child. Return the transform if it is true. Now go back to the erase method. First check if the brush target layer is not equal to 31 and return if yes. This line will prevent us from editing palettes. Then create a transform erased and get it with method get object in cell. Pass the grid, brush target transform and a vector 3 int which you create from positions x and y and 0 as a Z position. This is the default position the brush paints on. Go back to the editor, paint a few trees and then try erasing them. Everything works and we're done. Now let's talk about some ideas that you can use tile maps in 3D4. I'm sure that you can think of at least a few ways to use them in your own games. These are just my ideas of what you can do. First, you can use them like regular tiles for building 3D levels. No need to align objects. This would be so cool for 2.5D games with side view, top down or isometric view. And it does not necessarily need to be 2.5D. You can build a village to explore with this tool. Then with scripts you can make a grid building system in 3D. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I want to thank all my patrons for supporting me and welcome K Mimic and Paul Boy. Like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this content. See you soon! Bye!